It's good to be here tonight. We appreciate the Lord and appreciate all that He's done. And we want to look in the book of John, chapter number 5, and verse number 4 is where we'll find the reading of the Word of God tonight. John, chapter number 5, and verse number 4. The Bible says, For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. And when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him and said, The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another step it down before me. Jesus said unto him, Arise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. We'll stop reading there for the sake of time. But looking at these verses of Scripture today, I looked and it said um, here, it said, and when Jesus saw him, Lion knew that he had been now a long time in that case. He said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? And I thought about that, and I thought about this verse of Scripture. It said this man would go and he would lay there trying to get in the pool. And every year, a certain season, an angel would come down and trouble the waters. And I don't know how many years, maybe 38 years, this man had been afflicted. And I don't know how many years that he went out there and every year he had to go back home. Somebody had to take him back home because he couldn't get down the water. Other folks uh, would get in front of him and step down in the water. But on this particular day, things were different. All because Jesus passed by that way. Had Jesus not passed by that way, that man probably would have not got his healing that year either. But Jesus did pass by that way. And Jesus said, him, said to him, Will thou be made whole? He asked him a question. And uh, the man answered, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step it down before me. Listen to what Jesus said to him. Jesus said, On him rise, take up thy bed and walk. I want you to know today Jesus has the answer to whatever your need is. Yeah. No matter how long you've been facing troubles and trials, this man had faced this affliction for 38 years. It took him 38 years, but Jesus had the answer to his trouble, had the answer to his affliction. And I want you to know today that Jesus has the answer to whatever it is that may be bothering you. Yeah, you may be afflicted in body. We hear all the time stories. Some have cancer. Yeah. Some have sugar. Some have heart problems. But I want you to know just because the doctor shakes his head and says you've got something that can't be cured. Yeah. I want you to know I know one that knows all about it. Yeah. And it's not a problem for him to take Amen. care of whatever it is you're going through. Whatever it is you're facing. Just yesterday we got a phone call from uh, Sister Sylvia. Her sister had surgery and they had to take her back down for surgery and uh, things looked rough there for a while uh, but folks began to pray and get a hold of god and she came through that you see what i'm saying today is there's no problem too big for god there's no mountain too high see he's the creator of the mountain you see he uh, emitted up the stars in the heaven and he spoke this thing into existence so it's no trouble for him there's nothing that he can't take care of i want you to know today whatever it is he just wants you and i to depend on him and trust him with their problems we trust him when things are going good and we bless him when things are going good but it seems like when trouble comes along we begin to doubt we begin to fear and we begin to fret what are we going to do well i've got the answer for it today that jesus is the answer amen and jesus is the answer and he's got the answer to your problems whatever they may be today amen Ah, uh, this man, he said, no doubt, and within 
himself. I've dealt with this for 38 years. I've had to deal with this. But Jesus, that was no problem for him. It listened 38 years. It was just like yesterday to the Lord. It was no problem with him. He, he said this simple command. He said, Arise, take up thy bed, and walk. All that man had to do was trust him with the words that Jesus spoke. And I say to you and I today, if we'll trust the Lord, if we will trust the Lord, he'll come through on his part. I want you to understand he's not too busy that he's not heard your prayer. He's not too busy that they can't do what you ask him to do. Amen. And this man needed healing. And this man God is healed because of his faith. Remember the Bible says that if we have the faith of a grain of mustard seed, we can say to that mountain, be cast into the sea and it shall be done. Folks, God's not asking us to have a faith the size of this building. He's not asking us to have the faith, uh, you know, uh, a great big faith. He's asking us to have just a little grain of faith, a little bit of faith. Uh, you know what? He didn't even say uh, the mustard seed. He just said a grain of mustard seed. I want you to know today, my friend, that if we'll just have faith and trust Him, we'll come through and do His part. Amen. Amen. But it's up to you and I. It's up to you and I. Then uh, I looked over in, in John chapter number 9. John chapter number 9 and at verse number uh, verse number 1 of John chapter 9. Let me turn there just a minute. John chapter 9 and verse number 1. The Bible says, And Jesus passed by, and he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Yep. This man was born blind. He had never seen a tree. He had never, he had never seen a field of grass. He had never seen the pretty things of life. This man was blind from birth. And, and his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, said, Neither this man has sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, and he made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said unto him, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sin. And he went his way, therefore, and he washed. And I want you to notice this. He didn't come back blind. He didn't come back uh, uh, with 2040 vision. Oh, no, he came back with 2020 vision. He began to see uh, things, uh, things he's never seen in his life. He began to see. I want you to know today, he had to trust the Lord. The Lord spat upon the ground, and the Lord wiped the mud in his eyes. You say, well, that's an odd thing. Well, I want you to know today, Jesus can take all things, and he can use them for his honor and for his glory. I want you to know today, the thing you're going through, it might be that somebody else can get help to see God honored in your life and in your child, amen. It could be that God has you in a place that He can get honor out of your afflictions, amen. See, these disciples, they thought, well, surely this man's afflicted. It must be some sin that his mother or his father's committed. But Jesus said, oh, no. It's not a sin his mama or his daddy's committed, and not even him. It's that I need to get glory out of this. Oh boy, a lot of times we'll say, take my life and use me, oh God. That's a very serious statement to make. When we say to God, take my life, and we yield to God, and we mean that, sometimes He may take us through afflictions so He can get honor and glory so folks can see Him, so folks can see that He's still on His throne and He's a miracle-working God. He's not a dried-up prune that's just off in a corner somewhere waiting for something spontaneous to happen. Oh, no! He has it all seeing eye and it wanders to and fro. He knows exactly what's going on and He's not caught by surprise. But it could be that we go through things. We go through trials. We go through hard times. That God in the center of it all 
can get the glory and the honor from it. Amen. Amen. Yes. You remember, you remember yes. out there, and I talked about this on Wednesday about him being in the, the bow of the ship. Boy, those disciples were fretting, running to and fro. But in the midst of it all, there was Jesus. And in the midst of it all, they couldn't say, look at what we've done. But look at what God done. Hey, hey, I want you to know today, in the midst of everything that's going on around us, we can't say, look at what we've done. There's not a person today, I don't care what the governor of New York says, there's not a, thing, there's not a person today who's, uh, who's helped folks in the time of trouble like we're in today, but God, amen. You have to look back and you have to say, look at what God has done, amen. And then I can't help but believe in the midst of this. God's going to get honor. And God's going to get glory. He can take that bad thing and He can turn it around. Amen. What the devil meant for bad, God can turn it around and mean for good. Amen. Hey, listen. Somebody sang a song. Just told on a little longer. Help is on the way. I want you to know that's the truth. Amen. Hey, just when it seems like it's all over. Just when it seems like there is no hope. I want you to understand today. Hey, Help is on the way, amen. Yes, what if today we give up and our answer come tomorrow? Well, wouldn't that be sad? Wouldn't that be bad? Just hang on. If it don't come today, look tomorrow. If it don't come tomorrow, look to next week. But just believe and trust God. Hey, and listen, in the midst of it all, God can get honor and God can get glory. And then we see in uh, chapter 11, Oh, we hear, there's very familiar scripture here in chapter 11 of John. There's a certain man that was sick, and his name was Lazarus of Bethany, and he had two sisters named Mary and Martha. And uh, Jesus loved Lazarus, and he loved Mary and Martha. And when he would come to Bethany, he'd stay at Mary and Martha and Lazarus' house. And boy, they just had a friendship. Hey, you've met people along the way that you just could connect up with. And you had a friendship with them. And you loved them, and they loved you. How well, that was the way it was here. But Lazarus got sick. And Mary and Martha, they sent up for uh, Jesus to come. And so uh, and they sent and Jesus didn't show up when Mary and Martha thought he ought to. And Lazarus ended up dying. You say, preacher, that's a horrible story. Jesus was their friend. And yet, he let that man die. But I want you to know, uh, four days later, you say, that seems to be late to me, four days. Uh, Lazarus had died. And four days later, here comes Jesus. Well, old Martha, she ran out there. And I don't know if she was going to scold the Lord or uh, she was going to fuss at him. But she said, Lord, if you'd have been here, her brother wouldn't have died. Uh, Jesus said to him, just take me to where he is. And so uh, he began to weep. And I don't know if he was weeping uh, because Lazarus died or he was weeping because of their unbelief. But the fact of the matter is, he began to weep. And they took him out there. And that uh, Jesus said, uh, Lazarus come forth. And the grave closed. Uh, and he walked out. And he had the grave close upon him. And Jesus said, turn him loose. And Lazarus came forth. Uh, victorious over death. I want you to know, child of God, uh, for the child of God, we do not die. We live. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. There's no death in him. If if you're saved today, if you're born again, you can't die in Jesus Christ. You can live, 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 amen. Yes, sir. You see, we got a graveyard out here. Pan that over there, that graveyard. And there's a, there's a lot of graves out there. And you say, boy, that's a sad, that's a sad picture. But I'd say the majority of the folks in that graveyard, they're not dead. Somewhere beyond the sky. Somewhere out beyond Jupiter and Mars. There's a heaven, amen. And there's a God that sits on the his throne. And beside Him is His Son, Jesus Christ. And I want you to know today, somewhere in the midst of that city, that there's the redeemed, amen. And they're in the presence of an almighty God. Those folks are not dead. They're living, amen. Just as you and I are alive here today. Those folks.
folks are alive yonder in glory. Oh, Amen. Yes. Ain't that a blessing? And so today, Jesus, he, he said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came out of there. He was alive. There is no death when Jesus passes by. There's no death when he comes by. Oh, you see, I was dying. I was dying in my sins and my trespasses that night before I got saved. I was dying and going to a devil's hell. And my friend, when the Holy Ghost came to where I was and knocked upon my heart's door, and brother, he, he began to speak to my heart. Oh, I tell you right now, it wasn't a, I didn't feel a bolt to lightning. And, I, and the chandeliers didn't shake. But down inside, he whispered in a still small voice, today is a day of salvation. And when I stood forth and I accepted Jesus Christ Amen. as my personal Savior, He took out that heart that was a dying and He put in a heart that would never die. And I want you to know today that Jesus Christ that can do the same for you Amen. if you'll trust and believe on His yeah. name. Amen. Amen. And then in closing, I see here uh, Jesus in John chapter 3, John chapter 3 and verse 1. Nicodemus came to the Lord by night. Now Nicodemus, you all know about Nicodemus. Uh, Nicodemus was a ruler or a Pharisee. And uh, I mean, he was an intelligent man, a smart man. And he knew, he knew uh, the writings of old. And uh, Nicodemus, I don't know, maybe had watched the Lord for some time. But he got to getting curious about things. And he got to want to understand some things. I tell you right now, if you hang around the Lord and you hang around God's people, it'll make you curious to what's going on. And you'll want to find out what's going on. And Nicodemus, he came to the Lord by night. And, he, and it says there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus uh, uh, answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter in the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, You must be born again. Yep. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whether it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. And I want you to know today in closing that it is the will of God for every man, woman, boy, and girl to be saved. That is the will of God. It's not His will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Jesus Christ wants you to be saved. That decision is not left up to Him. It is left up to you to receive the Lord. He has come. He has made the way. He has prepared the way. He give us the victory that we could go ahead and step on and believe and step on in up to life eternal by believing and trusting Jesus. But I want you to know today, I can't give it to you. Brother Spry can't give it to you. Brother Joe can't give it to you. You're going to have to want it for yourself. I'll tell you something today. Just like the drug addict, he'll never quit his doping until he wants to quit his doping. An alcoholic can never quit his drinking until he wants to quit his drinking. And listen, a sinner man can never quit his sinning until he wants to get right with God. And I want you to know today that Jesus Christ come so that you could get right. Listen, you don't have to go to hell. Hell was not a place created for mankind. Oh no, hell was a place created for the devil and his angels. 
But man, through time, has said no to Jesus. No to Jesus. And Jesus, uh, he doesn't intend uh, to want to cast a man into hell. But men said no to him. And they sent their self to that awful place. But I've got good news for you today. You don't have to go. Amen. You can be set free. You can be redeemed, brought back and to the family of God. You can become a child of God just by simply believing on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody might say, well, I don't have an altar. A lot of times, and I'm not against going to the altar and getting right with God. That's where I got right at. But folks, you don't have to have an altar to get right with God. You don't have to you don't have to be in a certain building or place to get right with God. You can be with the very place you are right now. You can get right with God. You can call upon His name. Say, so what do I say? You just, you just talk to Him. You know, I, when I got saved, I just said, Lord, forgive me. I didn't know what to say. And today, that's all you have to do is just say, Lord, forgive me. You know, folks think you got to have these big words to say. Listen, if that was true, I could have never got in. If you don't know by now, I'm just a backwards, I, I, I'm just a backwards type of person. I don't have a fancy vocabulary, don't have a wall of degrees, but I am what I am by the grace of God. And that day I came to Him. I came to Him trusting and believing. I want you to know today that's all you have to do is trust and believe on the name of the Lord and you can be saved. Well, it was good to be here with you today. Boy, it's just been an honor to be around God's house with God's people. Boy, you, you can't beat being with God's people and being around God's people all week long. I just long to be at the house of God. I long to be around my brothers and sisters in Christ. And boy, I was just thrilled to death to be able to come and just see the smiling faces. I was I just blessed to be able to come and hear folks uh, talking and, and just worshiping God. It's been an honor to be here today. We'll be here Wednesday at 7 o'clock. You, by the way, that's tuning in by Facebook, would you please tune in 7 o'clock on Wednesday? Tell your friends about it. Yeah. Invite them to come out to the tabernacle. Oh, yes. We're just an old-fashioned church with just some country people yep. that love the Lord, that want to do a work for the Lord in these last days. Yeah, so until next time, may God bless you. Thank you.